Hello and welcome to 18 WJTS Inform. We're very honored to have in the studio with us State Senator Mark Mesmer. And Senator, welcome to the show. It's a, this is the second or third week that Se second full okay, week. Second week. Yeah. But you still mm -hmm. are going through some speeches and some things. So That's let's right. find out your your take on uh, Governor Holcomb's mm -hmm. uh, agenda and uh, you, some some speech with the judiciary, but you also have a transportation bill that you'd like to talk about. Yep, that, okay. that, uh, this week is, is, we're nearing the end of all the ceremonial you know, parts of the beginning of session, which really, it does kind of slows things down. The, you know, the, first, you know, the first week we had the inaugural activities. Uh, then Tuesday evening, uh, Governor Holcomb gave his State of the State speech. And he, li he laid out his, his you know, main priorities for what he'd like to see out of this upcoming session. Most of it mirrors, I mean, the, the, you know, the, obviously the budget issues, the, you know, the transportation funding, you know, th those things, um, you know, he submits his, his budget wish list, you know, to the, the, to the House for House Bill 1, 1001. And, and within his speech then, you know, that's where he kind of laid out, you know, his big, uh, you know, big areas of emphasis that he'd like to work on. I think drug addiction, drug treatment issues, you know, that parallel things we've started working on the last couple of years. You know, he'd like to see the, the, the prescription painkillers, the opioids, you know, the heroin, you know, issues that have really kind of been a uh, unpleasant plague that have, you know, started to creep up in, in different parts of the state. Uh, you know, he'd like to have some emphasis to that. Uh, he pointed out uh, really, you know, where, where we've come as a state, you know, the last few years, we've got the more Hoosiers, you know, going to work in Indiana than any time in our history. Um, and, and that's, you know, that, that's a plus. Uh, you know, our jobs growth, our, our economic growth has outpaced all of the states around us and the nation as a whole. Uh, you know, we've been averaging two and a half to three percent growth, uh, which is, you know, compared to the one to two percent that the nation as a whole has been, you know, going through the last, you know, last eight years. I mean, it's been, it's been slow to flat you know, as a nation as a whole. So us, us having two to three percent, two and a half percent averages in our uh, growth has been is really, I mean, you think, oh, one to two, you know, one percent versus two percent or two percent versus three percent, how much is one percent more? That's 50 percent more. So, I mean, I, I mean, it's a, it's a big difference. And, and if we can, you know, <clears throat> as good as we've done, and we've done amazing um, compared to the, you know, our surrounding states, compared to the nation as a whole, uh, you know, we, we have to continue to look for, you know, what what changes in tax policy, what, you know, what regulatory issues are we going to look at. You know, where's the next biggest hurdle? Uh, we don't have mountains, we don't have oceans, you know, we ha we don't have the things that draw that, you know, that tend to draw people, and and then you know with that you know draw businesses. So we've got to have the best sandbox, you know, for businesses to you know to for them to want to come to Indiana. We've got to have the best tax policy, the best regulatory policy, you know, we've got to have, we've got to have a really good environment for, you know, for people to want to come here to live, for people to want to, you know, come here and, and start businesses or grow their businesses. You know, they choose where they're going to, you know, where that's going to happen and we, we have to try to do all we can and continue, you know, to think outside the box, to work to see, you know, what can we do to position ourselves. I mean, we're the, t we're the top you know, in so many categories, you know, from, you know, taxation, from, you know, that we were rated the, the top state in the country as far as, you know, the, you know, for small business entrepreneurial startups by, you know, by a business magazine last year. You know, we've got a lot of great things going, uh, but, he, you know, he kind of laid out, you know, you know, things where he'd like to see us continue to improve, continue to look for the next biggest hurdle, to continue to outpace the rest of, we want to continue to outpace our neighbors and, and the country. And, and things we need to do to get there. So, a uh, lot of things to be optimistic about. And uh, 2017 looks like it's going to be, you know, a, a good year, you know, across the board. So, um, and then, then that was Tuesday evening. Wednesday, uh, we had the another constitutionally required, you know, ad address. You know that those are joint sessions of the House and Senate that the governor has to to outlay, you know, lay, you know outline his plans. You know, doing the state of the state. The Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, uh, Loretta, Loretta Rush, has to do the same thing on what they call the state of the judici judiciary. And they lay out, you know, what they've done as far as drug courts, um, they've done veterans courts, you know, things that they've tried to target, um, you know, the, the 
types of, you know, the, the places where certain court cases are sent to help more, you know, specifically address, you know, when it comes to drug addiction and, and, and alcohol addiction, alcohol abuse. You know, we've got a drug court, you know, one of our, you know, the, here in, in uh, Du Bois County, there's several across the state. We started a few years ago, you know, for veterans that are dealing with, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder and, and things that, you know, a lot of veterans uh, struggle with more on a, on a regional basis, but, you know, looking at trying to, to, to fine tune the court system to meet the, you know, the pressing needs of, of different, you know, different criminal activity and different things that, that folks struggle with. So uh, those two are out of the way and now we're just down to, to, to the meat and potatoes of session of committee hearings and, and we'll start to see bills, you know, pop out of committee, you know, some this week and, and a whole lot more next week for amending on the floor. I think uh, this week we had, a, you know, a, several dozen bills already that, that were heard last week come out of committee that we're starting to do amending on the floor and, and you know, by next week we'll start to do some final voting on, you know, third reading votes on, on bills that, that got started early. And I had my first committee hearing this week on Tuesday in the Senate Transportation Committee. Uh, I, myself and Representative Braun, we we filed a, uh, the, the two bills are identical at this point and, and we'll mirror each other, you know, all the way through and eventually, you know, probably one or the other will be the, the bill that we, you know, that we do final passage on. But allowing regional communities, re, you know, like multiple county areas or, you know, uh, regional groups of, of local government to partner up to help, um, help share the cost of you know, what we're looking at is the Mid-States Corridor and, and other, there's other regional road projects, a half dozen of them across the state that are, you know, kind of like ours. They're uh, <clears throat> US 31, you know, getting all of the bridges and overpasses done. It's all four laned, you know, from Indianapolis to South Bend. But there's a lot of places where there's still stoplights, you know, there's not ramps and overpasses everywhere yet. Um, so, I mean, c finishing that process, uh, Jeffersonville's got a, you know, some some regional road work uh, up around Anderson. They've got, I mean, there's different pockets of the state where there's other Terre Haute, you know, the finishing their, you know, some of their I-70 bypass work and stuff around the, you know, the around town. Um, just other, other places where this, you know, we're trying to set this up as a model that'll work anywhere. Uh, currently they can use uh, local option income taxes or wheel taxes to help, you know, fund transportation needs in the community. We're, we're adding, you know, a voluntary property tax assessment by businesses. You know, that, that if they're heavily into the transportation, logistics, uh, um, you know, if they're, if they're heavy use of, of trucking, you know, we'll, we would allow them to, you know, to do a voluntary property tax assessment that does not affect property tax caps. And we try to make it sensitive to tax cap uh, issues that, that are pressuring all local government, um, you know, tax revenues. And then you could also add a countywide, you know, property tax assessment that would have to be approved by a referendum. So, it, it, and you know, the the county um, counties in, in question in a regional road project, they could adopt. So they currently use wheel tax, income tax, and this allows a voluntary tax by businesses or a property tax assessment that vote, that voters would approve. And all of those, those new ones would be outside of tax caps. It allows that regional entity to go to NDOT and say, we, you know, we want to help cost share your portion of it and, and, you know, to try to get it from the back burner to the front burner. Uh, it could potentially, uh, and we use a, a, a section in code called, code called Port Authorities, you know, they can currently do, you know, levy work, they can do, um, you know, port work, rail, rail work. We're adding highway work to what a Port Authority can do. So you could, you could, uh, you could have a regional they call it a regional supplemental highway funding authority, you know, port, you know, partner up with a port authority or part, you know, in dot if it's, you know, part partially cost sharing, a port authority if you've got enough uh, potential revenue generated locally to take the state's whole portion of it, where you could then, you know, take the federal matching highway grants that would go with the state's portion, and 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 run a project, you know, with in dot in partnership with in dot. Uh, take care of uh, funding it completely, you know, from uh, local government, county government. So, uh, got the first hearing, positive input. I mean, you know, NDOT and, and the uh, Indiana Finance Authority, who are two of the partners or part of the groups that, that you'd work with, 
want to do some tweaking and fine tuning to make sure it's in a shape that you know that they're comfortable with. But the overall response was pretty good. So it's, it goes from the Senate Transportation Committee to Senate Appropriations Committee, and then I think in a couple weeks, uh, Representative Braun's House bill would do the same thing. It would go to Transportation, and then to Ways and Means, and then see uh, see what adjusting uh, NDOT and, and the Indiana Finance Authority want to do to make sure they're comfortable with it. And but it, it gives local government a, a good tool to help to help. Take care of local, you know, local and regional needs uh, that, that currently is not available. So, because I guess really in our area we, we have to start looking at ourselves as being regional. Yeah. Because uh, we, we compete with Indianapolis, we compete with Evansville, Terre Haute, South right. Bend. But we're as big if you put us all together. Exactly, and 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 that's really the we've had an emphasis on that on most economic incentives the last few years. Tra you know, start to look at your area, and we've got the radius group, you know, around you know Crane. You know all of the counties that 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 border you know the crane base you know they've got you know but that's to think think in a regional approach look at what you've got as assets and you know employ employment you know potential you know within you know think on a regional uh, basis and and do things to try to pull everybody together and that this will this work will work very well with that well senator thank you very much for coming in once again you're very welcome and we'll look forward to seeing you next week all right all right on fridays for the most part almost every friday mm -hmm. uh through the session the senator will be joining us here for wjts inform our guest has been state senator mark mesmer thank you senator thank you thank you for watching wjts we are local people watching local people